Hello, wonderful clinical partners. This is the UNLV PT clinical education team. I'm Lisa Taylor. I'm Keone Kins. And I'm Jay Chickatelli. We have some exciting news. UNLV will no longer be using the Clinical Performance Instrument, or CPI, to evaluate student performance on clinical experiences starting this June 2022. The decision for making this change was based on feedback from clinical partners such as yourself that the CPI was too long, too redundant, and difficult to access, and some CIs reported using the CIET and communicated a strong preference for using this tool as compared to the CPI. Recognizing that feedback on clinical performance is essential, the clinical education team investigated our options for a valid clinical performance assessment tool that was both student and clinician friendly, and we decided to use the Clinical Internship Evaluation Tool, or CIET. The CIET was developed by the University of Pittsburgh in 2007 and has been shown to be a valid and reliable tool. Training and completion for the CIET should take less than 30 minutes and there is no separate account or password required. All you will need to access the CIET is an email link that will be sent to your email address. It will be sent to the email you provide to your student on the first day of their clinical. If you would like to change the email address you want the CIET sent to after you've given your email address to your student, no problem. Just let the ClinEd team know and we can change it for you. Our objectives for this training are to familiarize all users with the CIET, make sure all users understand the CIET's definition of a competent clinician, define UNLV PT required performance levels for each clinical experience, and define how to use the CIET rating scales. For example, the ultimate goal for all students at the end of their last long-term clinical is to get a high five on the global rating scale of the CIET. The CIET will be used to assess student progress towards entry-level competence across all four clinical experiences. A competent clinician can be thought of as an entry-level clinician, a clinician who is able to manage 100% caseload in an efficient manner to achieve effective patient and client outcomes. Students will be assessed and compared to this competent clinician throughout all of the CIET. This table shows how the CIET will be used for our UNLV PT clinical experiences. For the student's first clinical, DPT 761, this is a five week clinical and the CIET will only be used at the final. At the halfway point for this clinical, a short Google survey will be sent with content based on the CIET to all clinicians. For all of the long-term clinicals, the CIET will be used at both the midterm and the final. As you can see, the numbers changed on our long-term clinical experiences last year. This is due to a curriculum change. To better align with the semesters and financial aid for students, what was previously known as DPT 762 is now known as DPT 762 763, wherein students will register for two separate classes, but it is one clinical experience. Therefore, what was formerly known as DPT 763 moved to 764, and what was known as DPT 764 changed to DPT 765. However, the general timelines of all of these clinicals did not change. There are three main sections of the CIET, professional behaviors, patient management skills, and a global rating scale, each of which we will explain in more detail. Also of note, at the end of each of those main sections in the CIET, there's a spot for students and clinicians to provide feedback, including both positive feedback and areas for improvement. We request that students and CIs provide at least one comment in these areas. For the first of the three CIET categories, professional behavior, there are four subsections. The first is safety, and this measures the student's ability to maintain safety for their, themselves, others, and patients. The second category is professional ethics, and this rates the student's compliance with ethical and legal standards, as well as rules and regulations. For the third subcategory, initiative, this addresses the student's ability to maximize all opportunities for learning during their clinical affiliation including independent problem solving, 
seeking out, accepting, and implementing constructive criticism, and developing teamwork and flexibility in the clinical setting. For the fourth subcategory, communication skills, this rates the student's ability to verbally communicate with patients, families, and other health professionals, along with, the, with assessing the student's written skills with documentation, home programs, and other required paperwork. This chart shows UNLV's expectations for professional behaviors. If rating a student as never or rarely, please contact the DCE at UNLV. You'll note that there is a rating of not observed, and this should be only used for the communication domain. And this should be used in instances where infrequent opportunities were allowed for this to be rated. Thanks, Lisa. Now, this, I'm going to talk about the second section of the CIET, which covers patient management and evaluates the student's ability to effectively manage a patient with an effective outcome. It's divided into four sections, examination, evaluation, diagnosis, prognosis, and intervention. These elements of patient-client management are defined in the APTA's Guide to Physical Therapist Practice. Examination includes all aspects of gathering data from the patient, including obtaining a history, a systems review, and performing tests and measures. Evaluation is the analysis and synthesis of the data gathered in order to determine a diagnosis and plan of care for the patient. The student should demonstrate development of critical thinking skills during the evaluation process of patient management, including determining the patient's impairments and functional limitations and how these relate to activity limitations and participation restrictions. Diagnosis prognosis involves all aspects of developing a plan of care for the patient, including determining a PT diagnosis, determining the prognosis or outcome for this episode of PT care, determining the appropriate frequency and duration of care, including criteria for discharge, and determining the appropriate treatments. Lastly, intervention includes the student's ability to apply the treatments, perform patient family education, monitor patient response to treatment and adapt accordingly, and to finally recognize when outcomes have been achieved. It's important to note that for all areas of patient-client management, the student should be using best available evidence to support their clinical decision-making. Next, in this slide, we'll review the different rating levels that are available to classify the students in terms of patient management skills. These are well below, below, at that level for familiar patients, at that level for all patients, or above. And we'll define each of these next. A student who's performing at the well below level depends on guidance for all patients. Guidance is defined as the student is dependent on the CI to direct all steps of the evaluation, treatment, and for clinical decision-making. A student who performs at below level requires supervision or has difficulty on the item or efficiency for all patients. Supervision is defined as a student who can carry out an evaluation and treatment, but the CI is still needed to provide verbal cueing or to facilitate decision making, correct minor errors, and monitor for efficiency and or effectiveness. The student who's performing at that level for familiar patients um, is functioning as a competent clinician by independently managing those patients that are familiar, um, patient diagnoses that they've seen before um, and have learned in school already. A student who's performing at that level for all patients is functioning as a competent clinician and independently managing both familiar and complex patients and can also carry an appropriate caseload for the setting. Those students performing above that level are performing above the level of a competent clinician and may also be carrying a higher than expected caseload. Next, Jay will talk about the global rating the final part of the CIET is a global rating scale. This scale provides an overall assessment of student performance. UNLV's expectations of performance in regards to the global rating scale are reflected on this chart. As noted, if there are any safety concerns or red flags, please contact the program immediately. Students are expected to be at a level of one to two by the end of their first clinical rotation, 
and to be continually progressing based on their respective clinical rotation as noted in this chart. The overall goal is a high five at the end of their last clinical rotation, meaning they score at a five or above on all categories. Keep in mind this signifies a competent cl clinician defined more as a new grad or entry-level clinician rather than as an expert or clinical specialist. Ratings of six to nine are reserved for students that demonstrate exceptional clinical performance. Advanced practice settings are expected to be rated num one number below, one number lower than you would expect for non-advanced practice settings. For example, we would expect a student in an advanced setting to be scored globally at a three at, by the end of their 764 rotation, while classmates in non-advanced settings would be expected to be globally rated at a four by the end of that same rotation. There's one final thing to be aware of with this part of the CIET. After completing the global, global rating scale, there will be a question asking, is this student performing at a level that is satisfactory for his or her current level of education? If you say no, the prompt will ask you to contact the school immediately. At the bottom of this screen, you can note where the CPI ratings compare with the new CIET scale. Thank you, Jay. To access the CIET, the clinical instructor will receive an email with a link that is sent to the email address you provided to your student. We recommend using a personal email address and one that you check regularly to avoid challenges with work emails, firewalls, or spam blockers. Only one link will be generated per CIET. Thus, in the event that there are multiple clinical instructors, all clinical instructors should work together to complete the CIET, as you can only submit one entry for midterm and one for final. This is different from the CPI, where multiple CIs could submit unique full midterm and final evaluations. With the CIET, CIs must work together to submit one entry. When you click on the link, you will be taken to this screen and it will ask you, have you completed the training for the CIET before? This is based on the honor system. If you click yes, it will take you right into the CIET. If you select no, you will be taken to this screen. If you have not previously filled out the CIET, you will be prompted to watch a video and take a short 20 question quiz. This 15 minute training video is a must watch for CIs who are new to the CIET. And we strongly recommend you, you take this training video provided by the University of Minnesota. You will also be given access to the CIET instructions, operational definitions for using the CIET, and we recommend you have these open as you take the quiz. A digital copy of the quiz and answer key are attached to this email that we sent to help ensure that you use the CIET as designed. When filling out the CIET, you will select the bubble that best reflects where your student is performing. You will do this for midterm and then again for final. We also request that you put comments in at the end of each category. On behalf of the clinical education team, we thank you for being such a valued clinical partner, and we look forward to hearing feedback about the CIET. Thank you.